teaching from the Riley et al. text for statics and mechanics of materials. This is really a problem of two-dimensional equilibrium or static equilibrium. Recalling the five-step problem-solving process, the first step is to read the problem, and you'll find this particular problem on page 269 of your textbook for CE 300. As we look at this problem, we notice that the beam is loaded and supported as shown. We will notice that at this end, we have a pin support, and at B, we have a roller support. We'll come back to those two terms in just a moment. What we're asked to find are the reactions at both A and B. That is our task. So we have read the problem. Next, we want to draw a picture. And in most problems in CE 300, the picture that we're going to be drawing is a free body diagram or abbreviated FBD. In this case, we want to isolate the body of interest. And the body of interest is the entire beam AB. So we're going to draw a free body diagram of member AB by isolating the body. The member of interest is this particular beam of some length. And we'll denote all of the details on there in just a moment. In order to have, well, let's see, let's label these points A and B. That's the beam. In order to have a complete free body diagram, we need to include all external forces. So we have a 500 pound force, an 800 pound force, a 700 pound force, and a 400 pound force. Those are the external forces. Now we also need to make sure that we include the reactions. We know that a pin has a potential reaction in both the vertical and the horizontal direction, knowing that that pin prevents motion both horizontally and vertically. Thus, we have what we will call a Y and a X. And of course, since we're using terms such as X and Y, we're working in a coordinate system that we're very comfortable with. At B, this roller can only restrain movement in the vertical direction and allows movement in the horizontal direction. So the only support reaction we have is a reaction in the Y direction. Now, in order for this to be a complete free body diagram, we need to also include all of the important dimensions of this problem. And we notice from the drawing in our textbook, these forces are all separated by a distance of three feet. Now, you'll notice that this particular drawing of mine is not necessarily to scale. And that is OK as long as all of our dimensions are accurate. Now, ideally, your drawings should be as close to scale as possible. Well, we have now drawn our picture. It's time to apply the principle of equilibrium. In order to apply the principle of equilibrium, we need to be able to classify our force system. We've got two options, concurrent and non-concurrent. This is a non-concurrent force system because all of the forces do not, the lines of action of all the forces do not intersect at a single point. Since it's a concurrent force system, we therefore have three equations of equilibrium available to us. And we'll list our unknowns. One of our unknowns is a sub x. Another unknown is a sub y. Another unknown is b sub y. That's all of the unknowns we have. That's three, three equations for three unknowns. We can absolutely solve that. Before we can say that we're done applying principles, we need to then apply these equations of equilibrium. This is where we need to begin to look at efficient problem solving. We want to find, if possible, one equation with one unknown to solve it, to avoid having to solve simultaneous equations, if possible. We notice that A sub x is the only force in the x direction. So summing the forces in the x direction, setting that equal to 0, we'll assume to the right is positive according to our sign convention. The only term we have in that equation is a sub x. Therefore, we can say with certainty that that reaction is 0. 
Now, we might be tempted to continue with the summa summation of forces in the y direction, but careful looking notes that we have both a sub y and b sub y in the y direction. If we sum forces in the y direction at this point, we'll have one equation with two unknowns. That's not going to help us at this point solve the problem. So let's consider the summation of moments equation, referred to by many instructors as the most powerful equation of equilibrium, because with it we can eliminate certain unknowns if we carefully choose our point about which we will sum moments from our equation. For example, if we sum moments about point A, set that equal to zero, we'll assume counterclockwise is positive to remain in our right-hand rule world of x and y coordinates. And let's begin to sum moments about A. Notice the unknown AY has a perpendicular distance from A of zero. Therefore, it does not enter into this equation of equilibrium. So the next force of interest is 500 pounds at a distance of 3 feet from point A. So the perpendicular distance between the line of action and the point of rotation. It is tending to rotate the beam clockwise. We'll come back to signs. All right. Since it's tending to rotate clockwise, that is negative according to our sign convention here. The next force we have is an 800-pound force at a distance of 6 feet, also rotating in a clockwise direction, so that's negative. Next, we have a 700-pound force at a distance of 9 feet, also in a clockwise direction, so that, for, or that moment is negative according to our sign convention. We also have a 400-pound force at a distance of 12 feet, also rotating clockwise, so negative. And last, and certainly not least, is the reaction B sub y at a distance of 15 feet from the point of rotation at A, it will tend to rotate the beam counterclockwise, giving it a positive value of moment within this equation. But solving this equation algebraically, we'll find that B sub Y is a positive 1,160 pounds. Since it is positive, it means it is drawn correctly in this free body diagram, and so a complete answer will include that direction up. Now we're down to only one more unknown, and we have one more equation of equilibrium at our disposal. Summing the forces in the y direction, setting them equal to zero, up will be positive according to our coordinate system that we have established. Starting left to right, a sub y is in the positive direction. 500 pounds is in the negative direction, 800 pounds is in the negative direction, 700 pounds is in the negative direction, and 400 pounds is in the negative direction. And don't forget that reaction by. Now we just solved for the value of by, and it's a positive 1160 pounds. Rearranging terms and solving for a sub y we find that A sub Y, or the reaction in the Y direction at A, is a positive 1,240 pounds positive, meaning this assumed direction on our free body diagram is accurate. So we will give a complete answer with that direction up for the Y reaction at A. Now, we have applied our principles by generating these equations. We have used math to solve those equations. We now have this absolutely critical final step. Does the answer make sense? Don't forget to use this question at the end of every problem that you solve. One quick way to make sure that these answers make sense is to examine their relative values. And we'll notice that the reaction at A is larger than the reaction at B. And if you look at the distribution of forces, there are larger forces closer to A than the forces that are close to B. So we would expect that the support at A would support more of the load than that over at B. So that conceptually makes sense. Another quick check is just to add these two values together, get a total of 2,400 pounds, and then add these values together for the total load of 2,400 pounds, and that does indeed check.